morning, and thanks for joining us at the Northside Landfill. I, you guys have been set up for a while, so you probably notice how what a beautiful view we have here. I could just stay here most of the day and enjoy this. Um, our street department is doing a lot of work as we get ready for the snow season. So um, we're always thinking about the next snow season and learning from the past season on how we can do a better job the next year. So we are here uh, at the landfill because this is one of several locations throughout the uh, area that we're gonna be stockpiling supplies for our snow season. So it's the sand, it's the liquid and the granular uh, de-icer, and that provides a quicker uh, and a better response when our, our trucks can just pull up to a, a location and refill and then go back out onto the streets. So it really does have an impact on the way we, res we respond to snow. And in the inland northwest, that's very, very important. You know, we get the snow, we get the ice, we get the cold temperatures and the weather models for this snow season are indicating that we are likely going to be in for a La Nina winter. That means colder temperatures, more precipitation, and that means more snow. So um, we are going to be ready for that. Street conditions during the winter are the source of lots of conversations with neighbors. So today we wanted to give you a preview on what you can expect for this next snow season. You know, our citizens' priorities are very high and we wanna meet those priorities. And despite the strain that COVID has had on our annual budget, uh, we have continued to prioritize the work that we do uh, on our snow efforts. So snow rep response puts the needs of our citizens first. The heart of our snow response is pretty simple. We want to remove the snow faster. So each year we strive to improve our efforts and make those changes. Uh, one of the things that we're, we've done this year is add more equipment to our fleet. We've purchased a what's called a slide-in sander, and that can convert a, a plow truck into a sander without the need for a crane, and that gives us a lot more flexibility as we serve the community. The sander joins other equipment purchases uh, from the last several years, including the addition of snow gates. And if you spend any time in the winters in the inland Northwest, you know how important snow gates are. We have now 17 of those. We continue to add those each year, and those uh, allow our plow drivers to avoid leaving berms at the end of people's driveways. That's very, very important to our, to our citizens here. So we're adding a station as well to measure street temperatures at higher elevations in the city. That's to see if we can use that information to customize our responses in different conditions and have better outcomes. And while we can't exactly predict how much snow we're gonna have each season, we are pleased to provide a plan that's adaptable and we're always striving to meet the community's needs. So right now I'd like to introduce our streets director, Clint Harris. Thank you, Mayor. As a city street director, I can tell you that it takes teamwork to make our snow response plan come together each year. That means modifying our employees hours to in the winter to respond to changing conditions at all hours. It means supporting our street crews by adding employees from our water and wastewater departments for plowing and allowing our city plows to be completed in about three days. It also means shoveling sidewalks around the city properties to aid our pedestrians and most importantly it means collaborating with our citizens. We're asking our citizens to help us to make winter easier for all of us by parking on the odd side of the street throughout the entire snow season. We know that some neighborhoods are short on parking, but whenever possible, we're encouraging people to make it a habit for the entire season to park on the odd side of the streets. In downtown, parking's a little bit different. After it snows, we ask cars to move off the streets between midnight and 6 a.m so we can clear out the parking base and the streets. Our, our parking teams are providing courtesy notices uh, on RVs and boats to give the citizens a chance to move them into winter storage locations. We're asking our residents and our businesses to be diligent about clearing sidewalks and ADA ramps with the goal of creating a 36 inch clear path by 9, 9 a.m the morning following a snow. These are important pedestrian routes for bus riders, for disabled individuals, and also for our kids. 
we'll do our part two by trying to keep plowed snow off of sidewalks as much as we can. We're asking people to get to know their neighbors and offer help to those who may not be able to shovel their walks and driveways. Remember, seniors and disabled individuals can call 311 to get connected to a volunteer service for snow removal before we receive wintry weather. Snow season really does require all of us to work together. I'd like to introduce our Public Works Director, Marlene Feist. Thank you, Clint. So, you know, throughout winter, we're gonna do our best to communicate effectively and simply with the media and the public. We'll continue to use all those communication tools that you're used to, that the city has, from our social media channels to City Cable 5 to our website. And during those full city plow events, we'll update that plow progress map that's so popular very frequently to give timely information to our citizens um, when those full city plows are happening. I want you to um, tell our citizens to watch for this. This is our um, insert that will be in their November um, city utility bills. It includes the residential plow route map on the inside, so that can help you when you're trying to figure out the progress of plows during, during snow season. Our response plan really includes uh, more equipment and more people providing greater uh, plowing efforts on a regular basis throughout the city. And we ask for a little bit of patience from our citizens uh, during this time. Our employees are committed to improving our street system when it snows, and our goal is to make it easier for you to get around during the winter weather. Now back to the mayor. Thank you, Marlene. So just in closing, would like to remind people now is a great time to get ready for the snow season um, at home. Make sure you have your shovels ready. Make sure your snow blower is working or sign up for a snow removal, removal service. As Marlene said, um, know what residential uh, plow route you're on so you can track the progress because everybody wants to know when the plow is going to show up on their street and uh, we have a great tool uh, for you to be able to do that. I cannot end this news conference without drawing attention to our new city administrator Johnny Perkins. He's not really new anymore. It's been about six months or so but he's over there. He's going to be riding a snow plow for the first time and the reason I draw my, my, our, your attention to him is because he comes from the great city of San Diego. And this is going to be his first snow season that he's going to oversee. And so uh, I'm looking forward to, to him doing that job, especially in a La Nina winter. So, Johnny, <laughs> I think you're up for the task. All right, so if anybody has any questions, we've got the experts behind me who can answer your questions. I have one question, <clears throat> that's all right. Um, so I know that, uh, you know, with the vaccine mandate, a lot of Department of Transportation workers either fired or just let go, retired, whatnot, and I know that they might have issues with plow drivers during the season. Is Have you guys been talking, are any city um, plow drivers or anything, do you guys, are you guys going to try and help them out, or have you, is there any kind of partnership with that? Well, let Marlene talk about that, but we haven't had any, anybody fired from our public works department yeah. because of COVID, so. Yeah. Um, the, the state mandate doesn't apply to our public works teams here at the city. Um, you know, so there are other potential mandates that could come down from the federal government. So we're watching that really closely to see what kind of guidance is available. So, um, sorry to clarify, I know that, um, but would you, I guess, have any of our local public works, you know, plow drivers, whatnot, help out the state and the, you know, state roads, highways, things like that? No, we're not really in the position to plow um, state roads. It's really the state's responsibility. It's different kinds of equipment that plow um, highways. They're much bigger fixed blade plow, nothing that we would have in our fleet. Um, plus our, our responsibilities do keep us very busy in the city. So I don't think we have extra um, crews to offer to the state. Of course, we always work together. So city, uh, you know, city roads that are designated state highways, we probably can help with as we already do, like on Trent and on Division Street. And then I have a, just another question. I was in Missouri and Indiana before this, and they ran out of salt uh, because of these La Nina winters. Um, what happens, I guess, or are you guys prepared for any kind of uh, limited supply, or are you guys totally ready? <laughs> you know, I think we, you know, Clint could probably answer this best, but we, we've been talking to our vendors to make sure that we have adequate supplies of sand, both liquid and granular de-icer to last us through the winter season. We have a pretty good idea of about how much we use each year, and we have um, that available to us. 
<laughs> it's a it's a thankless job, so thank you. And we all know drivers don't have patience when it comes to winter. Um, what have you guys learned, and how is technology helping you guys do this job better? You know, so I think what we have learned, Brian, is that um, we have to continue to look for new ways to do this um, to be better each and every year. Um, Clint has done a fabulous job at um, adding really um, specialized pieces of equipment that allow us to work in narrow streets like in Brown's Edition or the Lower South Hill. We added those snow berms and it was it was the best thing we could have done for our community really um, and they love it and um, we continue to use that kind of approach. You know, I mean, it's simple to say, oh, let's just put a tent up on the on the north side landfill and have sand available to us. But it's 10 miles between this location and our Main Street location. 10 miles in a plow takes a long time to drive. So they can come here, they can load up, and they can finish their work in Indian Trail. And isn't that an awesome um, addition for our community? So it's really about little things, incremental changes that make ourselves better each and every year. And by the, when winter's over, you're experts, but at the beginning, it's a learning process. Well, and just like for, for our drivers, we have to make sure that um, our teams are back in winter mode, thinking that same way. We always have some new people who are new to plowing, particularly in our utilities in water and wastewater to supplement our crews during those big plows. So yeah, this is, this is our transition time for our teams as much as it is our transition time for the citizens.